Hi, Caleb with Danzy Design Build here. And uh, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about basement walls and existing walls, particularly the load bearing walls in your basement. So we are here in a basement in Harriman, Utah, and we are looking at the load bearing walls. So this would be helpful for you if you are considering opening up your basement space, removing an existing framed wall that's in your basement, and wondering to, like, to get an idea of if that's load bearing or not. So this will give you a really good idea of how to tell which walls are load bearing and which ones are not in your basement. So um, let's just jump right in. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is the floor joists. Now these are the floor joists up here. They typically run from the front of the home to the back of the home. So they're these ones here. That is because they are going to want to install those the short span. So typically, and this house is that way, it's more shallow from the street to the backyard than it is from the, the left side of the lot to the right side. So, so these joists are spanning a, a shorter distance essentially. Now, in order to, to get them to span all the way across, sometimes, which is most of the time actually, you're going to need a load bearing wall in the middle or near the middle of the house to help those long joists be supported somewhere in the middle. So this is an existing wall. And uh, one way you can tell, this one is indeed load bearing. One way, there's a few ways you can tell, but the first one is these little supports here. Those are stiffeners that help the wall actually hold considerably more weight per size for, for the size of the lumber, which this is two by four. That's one way you can tell if it's load bearing. The other way is that it's in the middle of the home like we were just talking about. And then the third way you can tell is in any door opening, like this one here, there is a header at the top. And what's what you can tell about this header is that these joists obviously are going from the front of the home all the way through to the back. But this weight where the point is being, the load is being transferred, goes into this big header and then over to the side and down this stud right here to the left of the door and also another one to the right. You can see the same thing going on there. So the, the weight of these two here particularly is coming in here and then out and down. So this wall is absolutely load bearing. The other thing, there was another wall here, which could be tricky to tell whether or not it is because it's also two by six wall, which seems like, I mean, it is definitely a lot stronger. And so you're wondering maybe, well, why did they use two by four wall to be the load bearing one and two by six to be the non load bearing one. <clears throat> so you can tell that this one is not load bearing because it does not have that header up here. And then that this one next to it definitely does have the header. So this one is intended to be the load bearing wall and this one is intended not to be, this is just a partition wall. So what actually happened here is that there was extra lumber from the original construction and they just so happened to be two by six. So that was what got used down in the basement and that's totally great. It's awesome actually. Um, but yeah, this one is not a load bearing wall here. So those are some ways that you can identify some load bearing walls in your basement and if you're trying to get those moved. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was over here, what it actually looks like to have a beam installed instead of a load bearing wall. So this is a over here, this is a, the same things going on here with our joists. They're spanning from this beam here across the top of that beam and over to the next one. Now this is not as great of a span distance here as was in the other room, but it is with what's above it, it is neat. We do need to have a beam here and so, or load bearing wall either way. But because this room is intended to have been a theater room, they want to keep this, obviously keep this open. So all the weight from these different joists is coming into this beam being transferred down here. And behind this insulation mesh, you can see there is, uh, I mean, maybe not very well, but you can see that there is uh, wood there holding that beam up. And then over here as well. So we have those on each side. So that is how a, a beam would function the same way that a load bearing wall would function. So it's carrying that load from each one of these joists out to the side 
on either side. So there you go. That is how a beam would work. So if we wanted to take out a section of this load bearing wall, hypothetically, then you would want to do the same thing. And we've, we've pretty much already done that with this door. You can see that the door basically has the same idea. It's just a very short beam going on right there. So you could lengthen that beam and make it wider and taller so it can hold more weight. Maybe use LVL instead of dimensional lumber and whatever that needs to be. It's specific to each home and the engineering that needs to happen there. But that's basically the same idea. So that's how you can tell which walls are structural and which ones aren't. So if you need help with your basement finish and you're in the Harriman area or Salt Lake County in Utah County of Utah, um, you can reach out to us on our website, danzydesignbuild.com, and we will reach right back out to you. Thanks. Have a great day.